Madison headquarters, the state bar is producing a webcast for lawyers riffing on the lessons of making a murderer. This raises concerns about do we get it right in the criminal justice system. The docu-series has captivated the world and cut to the core of the criminal justice system. I said, I'm going to talk Tony's not done with you. The expert training lawyers on the power and failings of forensic science, the Innocence Project's Keith Findlay. You may recognize him from Making a Murderer. He won freedom for Stephen Avery in 2003 through DNA. That was then. This is now. Most lawyers go to law school because they don't do science, right? Okay, so um, it's sort of been just tradition that w over the years that whatever the forensic analyst said, the, everybody just sort of accepted it. And it's only recently that we've begun to realize that it, it's not that reliable. In 1985, a mistaken identification and an unreliable microscopic comparison of hair wrongly convicted Avery of raping a Manitowoc woman. DNA testing eventually identified the real rapist as Gregory Allen. We're fascinated by science. We've got all the CSI shows that make everybody believe that the science is instantaneous, flawless, and sexy, and it's none of those. Finley says bad forensic science is the second leading cause of wrongful convictions. In fact, the National Academy of Science says the only consistently reliable forensic science is DNA. The science isn't there to allow us to say that this shoe print or this bite mark came from this person and no other person. As his former lawyer, Finley won't comment on Avery's guilt or innocence in Hallbach's murder, but says the documentary highlights serious and common concerns about how forensic evidence is used. Have you ever planted any evidence against Mr. Avery? That's ridiculous. Have no, you? I have not. At trial, Avery argued sheriff's deputies framed him by planting his blood at the murder scene. Prosecutors called this FBI chemist to blast those claims. My opinion is that the blood stains did not come from that tube of blood. The FBI's testimony was both highly technical and controversial. Have you ever been asked to give a presentation on EDTA interpretation and blood stains? No, I have not. The FBI compared blood found in Hallbach's car with blood in a test tube left over from Avery's exoneration. Prosecutors argued if officers had planted blood from the tube, the FBI would find a preservative used in test tubes called EDTA. EDTA comparison is so rare, the only previous test ended in the stunning acquittal of O.J. Simpson. And might that be because your lab screwed up in the O.J. Simpson case? No. We did not screw up, as you say. Finley says not only did such EDTA testing lack scientific reliability, it lacked objectivity. Did you know that this was a case that involved an allegation of police planting evidence? Yes, I did. He doesn't need to know why he's doing the testing. If it's a valid test, he should be doing it blind. Whether the outcome was right or not, the process of developing and presenting this scientific evidence was really problematic. The Wisconsin Bar is offering this webinar to improve understanding about the limitations of forensic science for attorneys, judges, and even the public who serve as jurors. Our business is to be concerned about justice.